What's up guys, welcome to the video on what is the difference between at component and at service in the Spring Framework. Now we're actually gonna take a look at an actual answer here besides the regular documented answer of services just allowing us to specify an intent, okay? So I'm gonna give you some use cases here to show you the differences on when at service is not only better in terms of describing your intent, but also practically better when combining it with AOP, all right? So let's get into the project. This is the post I wrote. I'm gonna be making reference to this diagram over here very briefly. I'm not going to be going through the whole stereotype hierarchy over here, right? I'm just gonna be concentrating on service and at component because that's what you guys clicked on the video for, all right? Now, all the source code is available on GitHub so you guys can have a crack at that and play around with it. All right. Now to start the conversation here, a stereotype sanitation, right? At the head of at the, the head of the hierarchy, not much of a deep hierarchy, right? Is the at component. And the at component is really how we specify that we want our Java class to become a spring bean in the application context. Now, if we start doing that all over the place, we can have spring basically dependence inject one spring bean, let's say into the constructor or a setter or a field into another spring bean, right? So we don't have to write our own factories or anything like that. Now, all these other annotations like configuration, controller, res controller, repository, they all add something extra on top of that component, okay? But service, you would think would add something extra, does not. If you go take a look at the source code of service, it's just a composite annotation in which it is of type as well, of at component like the other ones but there is no service type injection there's nothing extra you get the only thing you get is a way for you to identify the service layer of your application you're basically saying this is the intent of using at service i am identifying my service layer and there's really nothing more than that it adds some meta information there so let me show you what i mean we are going to be dealing with this application over here that is a Spring Boot application, all right? And all I'm gonna be doing here, as any Spring Boot application does, is annotate my main class here with at Spring Boot application. I'm gonna do a component scan of everything under com.mvpjava, which is basically gonna hit all these classes over here, all right? I'm gonna conveniently put them all in one spot for us to you know, easily follow along. Now, this application will calculate a random discount for some hard-coded product, right? This is a very simple application. It's just trying to showcase the difference between at service and at component. So if we go take a look at our service layer, right? This class is our service layer. It is our entry point into our business layer. So we should put at service here to identify that that is our intent. However, before we do that, I'm just gonna use at component, right? I'm gonna simply register it as a spring bean. Now you'll notice that it also is going to dependency inject through auto-wired. However, in this case, it's actually optional because spring knows how to do this for a single overloaded constructor or overridden constructor in this case. It looks for something of type discount repository. So, you always inject your DAOs or your repositories as they're called in Spring into your service layer, okay? So the repository layer is another layer where you have all the uh, implementation details of your persistence layer, whether that be SQL, whether that be JPA, Hibernate directly, so on and so forth. So we don't really see any implementation details leak at the service layer class. And we're also not throwing back like SQL type exceptions, we're throwing back business type exceptions. So the only thing that this service does is it's gonna calculate a product or calculate a discount rather for a product. And if the discount is greater than 0.9, we throw a business exception because you know that would be basically giving it away for free, right? Something like that. So we return our discount. Now, if we go take a look at the other types of objects we have in here, like I said, the spring application context here is going to bootstrap our class. And just before the run method completes, it's gonna search for, it's gonna pick up everything of type component and register that, but it's also gonna search for beans of type command line runner. And that's exactly what I wrote over here. I wrote a separate class of type component as well. I want it to be a spring bean in the application context. So it'll automatically get picked up because it's of this type. And I'm actually dependency injecting the service. 
that I just went through that has the DAO, the repository injected into it. And then I'm going to use that in the run method to actually execute calculate discount for and some random number will come back. Okay, so that's the bootstrapping process. But I have a couple of at components that I have just identified. Now, when you look at the service layer, obviously we have two at components over here, but really one is considered our, our service layer and one is just considered a, a plain old Java bean, if you will, right? So we don't have any meta information. We don't really have a way to describe or differentiate one from another. They're just at components, kind of like saying your type object, right? So in this case here, if I wanted to, for example, create my own service, let's say something like I wanted to intercept all the service layer methods. In this case, there's just one, keep it simple. And I wanted to inject some type of service. It could be logging. Maybe I wanted to log like when the method was called and when the method exited, or maybe I wanted to intercept when this exception got thrown, right? If it got thrown, or maybe I wanted to um, provide a metric of how long it takes to execute this whole method, right? Now, I don't wanna go into this and, and actually code that service in there because that's more of a cross-cutting concern. I, I would find myself doing that all over the place. And also, it's not a separation of concerns because I'm mixing in kind of another service with my business service. So how I would extrapolate that service, example, logging in this case, would be through an AOP advice. So if you haven't heard about AOP, right? AOP is all about extracting a service from your business layer and advising your business layer through matching whatever methods you want to match through these AOP point cut expressions. And once they match, your service gets injected by proxies, basically dynamic proxies at runtime. So when you use the AOP, you're going to need to differentiate one at component, one spring bean from another, right? Especially if you want to identify your service layer. So how do we go about and do this? Now, first of all, let me just run this application just to prove to you that it works, right? So we run this application and we can see here, we get our random discount printed out here, right? From the command line runner. This line over here does that. That's perfect. Now, I also know that if I run it with at service, all right, let me just uncomment that and run this again, that this should work just the same, all right? So this proves the point really that, you know, there's, there's not really anything extra happening. There's no extra services injected by Spring itself. It's just that the intent, right, is clear. And now you know, oh, this is a service level class. Now, you know, this class may not have had the word service in there. So it might've been a little bit harder to search for. So it just clearly identifies that boundary or that layer. That's basically what you're gonna get from the documentation, all right? But let's kind of go back and show how this can be actually extra useful when combining this with AOP. So let's go back to running this with the add component just to make sure we have a normal baseline here and everything is, is working as expected. Okay, now let's go and take a look at how to write an aspect, right? So you're gonna need, in Spring Boot it's easy, you just have to annotate a class with add aspect and make it a Spring Bean with add component. It'll automatically get scanned for you, okay? For Spring Boot. Now over here, you'll notice I came up with a method that's using a logger that I've set up here. And it's basically just gonna say around advice matched for whatever class and method that matched for my regular type expression. Now I say regular type expression because that's kind of what a point cut or an AOP point cut is, right? This is what's called an advice. There's five types of AOP advice. I'm not gonna get into all of those, but this one says, intercept whatever you match within this AOP point cut expression. And once you intercept it, execute this before you talk to the target method, okay? So it's a proxy that intercepts the target, in this case, our at component. So if I run this now, I'm gonna rerun it, but I'll show you another output of the console. It matched two things. It matched, first of all, our bootstrap command line runner because it's of type component. And it also matched our discount generator service, which I annotated with at component. So you can see the whole signature that it matched over here. And you can see this because that's exactly what I logged on this line over here, okay? So we matched two things, but 
you don't want to match two things or three things or four. You want to match, let's say, just your service level methods. But this is complicating the point because service is of type, you know, at component. So you'll end, end up picking it up. But in this case, I just annotated it with add component. So I don't have like a nice way to clearly identify it. So I got to be more specific in my AOP point cut, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another AOP point cut to be more specific. Now this one looks harder to read, right? It basically uses a designator called execution, which says, well, now we got a meta character to understand, right? Star, what does star mean as a meta character? Now you might think, well, you know, it's like regular expressions, zero or more of anything, and that would be false. You know, in AOP point cut land, right, or world, star really means just one thing. So in this case, it'd be one return type. Then I'm specifically matching the method calculate discount for, and I could use other meta characters there for package names and stuff like that before that. And then star would be any one argument. So in this case, com.mvpjava.demo.product. I could actually have rewritten it like this to be very specific, right? It returns a double, and this is the argument that I'm expecting. But I kept it more generic, so it's not as brittle. Because let's say one day you change double to big decimal or something like that, then your match is not going to match. Your regular expression or your AOP point cut's not going to match. And so that'll be more of a brittle, but you know, more precise um, point cut expression. Then, so we're going to match you know, methods that are going to match the signature and they have to be within a class that is annotated with the at component annotation. So you, if I run this now, right? Let's see what comes up. I have to stop this first of all. I have to stop it. Start it. Sorry. I should have done that first. Okay. So what happens here is I only match the one I want. That's fine. Now I'm in this. Now I'm in the service method. However, it came at the cost of me developing a more complex AOP point cut expression. And again, you might now understand what star means, but in six months from now, or maybe a week from now, you're not going to remember what star is because you hit the command line all week, right? And then you come back here and you're like, oh, what is it again? You know, there's also another meta character, uh, dot, dot, which is exactly zero or more, just like regular expression. So it can get confusing when you're going back and forth. And unfortunately, if you even write this one below, you can actually get yourself into a situation where it becomes very brittle and things just stop matching because you change, you know, these are strings, right? That's not type safe uh, point cut expression. So things just will stop matching without you knowing it unless somebody complains about it. So, or you get an exception. So what do we do here? How do we reduce the complexity of our point cut expressions and get back to this nice one like, like this, right? Well, we could just say, I want to scan for, or I want to match all methods that are annotated within a class. Now, it's not all methods, right? You can't match private methods in Spring AOP. It is a limitation. If you want to match even private methods, you got to go with something called Aspect J, right? But for service layer classes, you shouldn't have any private methods. They're client facing, so it's all good. So in this case here, we we're back to having a nice point cut expression for service but we have to actually go and you know annotate it with service instead so our intent we go back to our intent this is a service class but now if i rerun this right i should again just have one match i don't have any collateral damage i don't have any other at components that show up and the other thing is let me just stop this here the other thing is is that if in the future, another developer, including yourself, adds other at component classes, they won't accidentally be picked up in your AOP point cut expression, right? So it's kind of like a future proof way of avoiding that issue. So by using at service over at component, we can gain better readability in our AOP point cut expressions. Okay, let me just go back to it here. So we get this back and it reads just as clear as our intent. And that's the whole point. Okay. So there you have an actual answer, right? Service. Sure. It doesn't add an extra spring related service to your bean. However, it could be used to clearly identify it 
apart from the other stereotype annotations, including, in this case, at component, in order to inject a service at the AOP layer. Okay. Now, this opens up the door again to other nice features. For example, I can now create composite annotations, right? And I could say, I want this annotation at transactional service to be of type service, which is also of type component indirectly. It also will start a transaction for me, which will time out and throw an exception and will roll back after 42 seconds, right? And this is an annotation that is um, applicable only at runtime, not a compile time or anything like that. Now, in this case here, I won't start an actual transaction because I haven't set up a data source and stuff like that. I just wanted to showcase the difference between service and, uh, and at component, but this surely would work. So and now you could actually use this annotation, right? And we can go back to, let's say, our service class, and we can actually swap this out now. And we say this method, if I had set up a data source properly and everything with a database in the back, I could actually have this method calculate discount for start a transaction for me on entry, right? And this is done through Spring via AOP itself. It'll execute my code. And if it succeeds, it will commit the transaction on exit. Or if there is an exception, it will roll back the transaction automatically. Or if there's a timeout, like I actually put here, it will also throw an exception and roll back. Now, this is also very nice because it gives me more, a, a nicer way also to perform a nice point cut expression, right? Like this, instead of saying, you know, it's annotated with at service and it's annotated with at transaction, you know, and possibly this method type, you know, with this argument. So it's, it's a nice way to just match what you want. So now if I run this, it should work just the same just because I've set it up properly. All right, so where's that AOP interception? Uh, around advice mast, right over here, right? So everything works as is. So there you guys have it. That's why we wanna use at service over at component, even over the fact that it's just an intent, okay? It's all about nice point cut expressions when using AOP and identifying everything properly and having maintainable code there. So I hope you guys enjoyed that if you did you know what to do a nice thumbs up or a share and until next time guys i'll be getting the next one ready take care